bro, bro, bum, bro. Yo, what's up? I'm the deep bro. The way he says bro really angers me, man. Oh, that it's whole so scene like, oh, angers me. I bro. mean, you've, you've gone straight. I went straight in. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what we're talking about, guys? Uh, there's no time for chitter chatter. No chitter. Some straight in. No time for pre-pod chitter chatter. There's no time this week. We've got to go straight in. Straight in. Straight into those critters. Let's go. No, I'm joking. All right, dear listener, welcome, welcome to another dear, dear wonderful podcast. Um, we are here to once again talk more about the boys. Now, Forrest, I've realised I sent you a message today saying we've been talking about the boys since May, every week <laughs> since May, and it's been consistent. Um, and to be honest, we've done that on purpose because that's what we planned because we finished the marathoning of the MCU where we've actually still got, actually, to be honest, we've still got to do Echo, but we've caught up. Um, oh yeah, shit, we do. We do actually. Um, but we've got, we've got ideas. We're nearly, nearly at the end of the season four, uh, uh, of the boys, uh, season eight. For episode seven is what we're going to review in a moment. Uh, episode eight, which is the finale, coming out this week on this Thursday. Um, so yeah, I mean we've only got this week and next week left, and that's the boys done. And then it's then it's kind of open. We're we're going to going into a new exciting phase. The listener, we're going to be bringing back the roulette for the wild card movies. The roulette. Oh my gosh, we're going to need your suggestions very soon when we'll let you know when that happens. We'll do another roulette and we'll get some more, um, whether that's TV shows or movies, we've yet to decide what that is. We'll get that on that, get it reviewed. More superhero content coming on the Wednesdays, but also we are building up our Friday episodes into something a little bit more structured now, aren't we, dear Forrest? Um, We are indeed. We are. Structured Fridays, structured (laughs) Structured Fridays. Structured Fridays. Oh, I-D-A-S. What? No, Y-S. Do you you remember the- Structured (laughs) Fridays. So we've only been doing the Friday episodes for about a few months now, but if you go back to the first one or the second one, you and I, do you remember we improv'd? Mm. And we were like, this, this is not what we need to be doing. <laughs> this is not going to work this way. Um, Putting our entire careers on the line. Well, for literally. The, literally. For the sake of improv. If you haven't listened to it, do listen to it. It's, oh, yeah, it's absolute and chaos. The, the AI one's fun as well. The AI one, that yeah, was, actually, to be fair, the, the AI script is actually quite good. That was Kevin Feige and James Gunn having a spit spat, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I remember that one. Um, anyway, uh, we are doing more interview episodes. We're doing more reviews on a wildcard basis that will be placed on a Friday episodes. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did The Exorcism. If you haven't listened to it, do listen to it. It's available now. Uh, that stars Russell Crowe, thanks to Strike Media. We've got that. We've got a few more um, titles to review from Strike Media, which is really exciting. Mm. That's coming up. We have also just recorded an interview with the wonderful, brilliantly talented people of Kindred Comics that have created uh, Extra Man, the first black British superhero. Um, and we met those guys at MCM Comic Con uh, back in, uh, not October, May, not too long ago. Uh, absolute brilliant guys. We interviewed them last Saturday. And that episode will be coming out this Friday. So please do check it out. It's such it's such a good episode. Really great chat, wasn't it, mate? Some, yeah, really good. Little uh, little tidbits in there. Uh, Extra Man's brilliant. Um, yeah, really, really excited for that to come out. Um, also, we talk about a show uh, called Soup Cell. Uh, or Super Cell? Soup, Soup Cell. Cell. Yeah. Uh, on Netflix, which everyone should watch, including Matt. It's a fantastic on it. show. Yep. It's on my list. Um, but yes, yeah, go and listen to that. Uh, that'll be coming out Friday. But tonight or today mm. or mm. whenever you listen to your mother trucking podcast, we will be looking and exploring and delving into each deep k- 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 crevice oh. <laughs> uh, of The Boys, Episode 7, Series 4, Forest talking to yourself edit this podcast correctly so we can roll those titles please
Nice. Here we are. Nice. 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 You should t- every time I edit it, right, and I put those titles in, I feel like a little DJ. I, just, I edit <laughs> a little them in DJ. I, a little DJ. I edit them in. I press play. I went boom. Yeah, loving that. So Love that. before we go straight in, dear listeners, please do give this podcast a rating. We are really trying to get ourselves out there a little bit more as well. On the old algorithms across the cross pollination of the social platforms, I think we said last mm, week. The cross pollination. <laughs> so on this podcast, please give us a good rating. Uh, shout us uh, out at the top of the mountains if you can, and share this to all your loved ones and your not so loved ones. Even if you've got like a recent ex, just send the podcast and go. Look, this is look, these are my friends. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> My brain is mush, mate. I don't know if I should your, be talking. Your brain is cross-pollinating. It really has. I'm ready for a break. Um, so, so here we are. Episode seven. It was a Christmas episode, mate. It was. In, in summer. But, but only for like <laughs> five minutes of the entire episode, which Started is weird. with a Christmas song. It bloody threw me out of a loop, that did. But I, I suppose, is, is this like... Uh, but actually, on retrospect, because I was thinking, I was like, "This isn't this isn't a Christmas episode, but it is a Christmas episode." And actually, it's quite it's a bit of genius because we know as actors mm. that production companies are currently filming Christmas episodes so that they can edit them in time for Christmas. They are so actually, yeah. you know, it's in classic The Boys style. They are taking off the cover of their duvet. And revealing their their big old dick energy underneath, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, they are you know they're showcasing yeah. that actually these Christmas episodes would be filming at about this time of year. They so. would, and that's very true. Yeah, because like in well, in the creative world, it is sort of panto time, isn't it, for theatre? Mm. Christmas episodes for screen. Yeah. Although having said that, no, it is Christmas time because they're in the pub and it's there's Christmas it, lights. It, it, and, it was and Billy definitely Butch Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll take Christmas that last thirty time. seconds back. I thought I was being really intelligent and clever, but clearly not. The balls have just the balls. <laughs> the boys have shoved their balls in over. What? Anyway, carry on. Let's stop cross pollinating. God <laughs> sake. <it. laughs> this is going to be fun. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it is it is set at Christmas time. And um, we. Cookie. we Christmas time. We we Cut have a. I wanna. I wanna. It's Christmas not a fit. It's, it's sake. <laughs> oh my god. I am oh my ze- god. I am so hyper and have zero attention span. <laughs> so this podcast gonna be wild. It's gonna be wild. This is. Okay, all right. Okay. Sorry, carry on. Carry Sorry, on, carry no, we're doing this seriously. Yeah, we're doing this seriously. Okay, so, yeah. All right, yeah. So, <laughs> the- Matt, Matt's doing this, but after after we record this and we go we go off, right, he'll message me like, Sorry, actually, I want to take this podcast seriously now because we're at a point in time where we could really gain some traction and all you've done during that podcast for us is just, is just yell and shout obscenities and just go crazy. I want yell to talk obscenities. about the Oh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly how I talk, like this. This is my voice. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what, dear listener? This last week, I've already uh, on Instagram. Somebody commented that Forrest literally sounds like Billy Butcher. Now, I'm. I mm. think we need to maybe do a poll. A poll. Mm. Let's do a poll. All right, dear listener. Poll. Does Forrest sound like Billy Butcher? Forrest, I want yep. us. To, can we find like some Billy Butcher quotes? Oh, yes. Find a Billy yes. Butcher quote, and I this want you to fantastic. do a Billy Butcher quote in your best Billy Butcher accent, or just your accent, because that's what we're trying to prove. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and then let's, uh, let's see if it actually does sound like it. The best Billy Butcher. Here we go. So here we go. C. Oh. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, ad blocker everywhere, too- mate. Come on, uh, ad blocker. Right, here you go. You back off, or I'll shove this stick where your dick used to be. <laughs> You're a bunch of pathetic, suit-worshipping... Oh, I don't even know if I can say that word. Yeah. Wait, I think you can, but... <laughs> Cunt, cunts. 
<laughs> I bet you, th- I bet you thank a soup if they shit your mum's best china. Did it ever occur to you that they split your spine or broke your dick just for a laugh? Where's your fucking rage? Your self-respect? Sitting here in your little share circle, having a little whinge and a moan. Fuck letting go. You should be out there with a fucking chainsaw going after them. Just a bunch of scared fucking rabbits. There you go. He's like he's in the room. <laughs> He's in the room, <laughs> Carl Urban, everybody. <laughs> my favourite oh thing gosh. about about the comment was that I was I was mimicking his accent. No, I no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, arguably it's the other way round there, but you know, let's <laughs> I digress. <laughs> it uh, is, anyway. Honestly, uh, well, that was that was stunning. By the way, oh, the moment you, you came in, I was like, Do you know what, mate? Why the hell would you want given an audition? I don't know. Be, that's beyond me. Mm. It's a crime. It's an absolute mm. crime. Well, even in the Extra Man uh, podcast, I don't think they said it whilst we were recording, unfortunately. But uh, Jermaine was loved yeah, my accent. Yeah, he did accent. actually, didn't he? So, yeah, he did. He met, but... Actually, it's been said a few times. He also, I remember Jonathan Jonathan Salemi that was in. Um, Oh gosh, I was about to say The Last of Us. No, it was Ooh, the he would he would love that. He would have loved that. You know what was the, what was the, the last <laughs> the last deal the last, last deal. deal. There you go, the last deal. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and uh, he said that he loved your accent. He loved your voice. Mm-hmm. Do you know what's great is that I'm there too, and <laughs> nobody nobody ever says that my voice sounds nice. Yeah, I don't know bring, why. You bring the looks, mate. You bring the looks. Oh, see? Okay. Yeah, right. and, then, and then you bring, you bring this voice to the podcast as well. <laughs> it's diabolical. It's a shame. I why ruin does... it with my <laughs> voice and my silly wheezy laugh. <laughs> why? Why does nobody mention my voice? Why? Why does no one mention me? <laughs> oh, I'm here as well. <laughs> I'm here as well. <laughs> Just trying to get a bit of exposure myself. It's the thing is, is it you? Who's the one that calls us Australian? People think that we're Australian as well at times. Oh, did they? Yeah, mm. we get comments like, I really like the. Somebody did an email about us, didn't they? About, it might have been Bob. Oh, you know. yes. I no, think it was Bob. Bob. Was it Bob? Uh, yes. I Bob like the Belgium. Australian one. We're like, who's that? <laughs> who's that? Um, anyway, cool. we digress. Anyway. Yes, Christmas episode. <laughs> yes, yeah. It is. yeah, it's it is Christmas episode, uh, and we get Ryan recording Avenue Q uh, Christmas special. Um, straight another question. So Avenue yeah. Q is a is a popular like you know adults musical, right? Is it also a TV show in the states? Because I didn't know that. Well, it's it, well, it's like a rib on Sesame Street, isn't it? As well, and all um, of that. That's what Avenue Q kind of was based on. Yeah, yeah, but is Avenue Q actually a show, though, before no, I, it was the stage show? Or is it just the stage show? I think it was just the stage show. Correct me oh, if I'm okay. wrong, any musical theatre n- 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 encyclopedias out there. Um, mm. But I have, yeah, I think it was just a musical, right? Okay. Um, but uh, they're doing a concert, actually. They, they've, they've just sold out a one night only, I think it might be a 20th anniversary concert in London coming out Ooh. soon. It might be this month, you know? Yeah. Bloody, I, lo- I love Avenue Q. It's great, oh, great beginning to the show. Um, yeah, and then we get like uh, Ryan and A Train. Oh yeah, A Train is one of the Avenue Q puppets. Yep, Ma- Maeve's um, in. I think Maeve's. A, isn't Maeve a? I think puppet? so. I think Maeve's in there. Firecrackers um, in. Firecrackers in there definitely as a puppet. Yeah. It might not be Maeve actually. Mm. Um, but like it's yeah, it's definitely playing into that kind of. But also the what the way that they were doing the lyrics and stuff, and the way that Ryan's kind of participating it with it, he kind of senses the bullshit immediately. And what's great mm. as well in this episode is that he kind of uses it as a platform to kind of like go, you know what, I, I'm not about this, and he has that kind of direct address down to the camera lens later in the episode, which I think's a good choice because it develops his character quite interestingly, and I'm interested now to see how his character kind of fits in with Homelander, particularly in the finale. And this is the thing. Like, it felt like this whole episode was setting up for the finale. It's yeah, a oh, huge setup. 100%. Did you, did you really like the Ryan stuff? Because I've, I've got a bit of a like, thought. Because, so, for me... Yeah, I don't mind this... it. I thought it was good. Look on. I do... For go me, on, mate, of... go on. Um, go on, say go it, on. say it for us, please. Um... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I feel like the Ryan stuff kind of came out of nowhere, really. 
right? This is a kid who's been brought up, you know, on the whole from Homelander. 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 Um, <laughs> do that Homelander dance. Um, the, he's been brought up by Homelander, and he's a bit like... One of the first scenes, first scenes of Ryan, right when he's out of Becker's Becker's grasp, he he's in the um, theme park restaurant, you know, like the Planet Planet Hollywood, like you know, soup version of that. And it, and I feel, and yep. he goes to like, and he does go to the theme park. It Ryan's been to all of these like gimmicky shit, right? So for him to be in an Avenue Q episode and sit there and go, do you know what? Enough's enough. I, I just don't buy it. I feel like that was a means to an end for the writers, but it didn't make sense. For me. Do you know what? I kind of thinking about it now. I kind of agree that that actually they swerved his character into a more moral lens, moralistic mm. lens than they probably should have. Because not only in episode before this, episode five and six, he started ended up being a, bit, a dickhead to people. He ended up getting thingy to slap the thingy in the face and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh. Ryan's yeah. now playing into Homelander's kind of like game, and then all mm. of a sudden Ryan's gone. Oh, actually, now I've had a change of heart. I've thought about my mum, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were we've already been there though with you, and now we're going back to that. So, and it, mm, yeah, maybe. True, and it does true. feel like what what you're saying about they're just gearing up for the end of the series. It, yeah. it just, I don't know, the pacing's just off for me with Ryan. But anyway, that's what. There's loads more to this episode, so we won't keep talking about there Ryan. Really is. That happens with Ryan. So in terms of, for me, I think the MVP in this episode is A-Train um, mm. and, and Mother's Milk, actually. I think in terms of both of their kind of mm. uh, character arcs, I mean, we get the full redemption arc for A-Train, um, which is really good. Um, but we also get a really lovely moment with Mo- Mother's Milk. You know, he, is it Janine, his other half? Is, is X other half now? Back to other half of Janine? I don't think it's not Janine, is it? No. It's not. Um... Barbara. I'm going to say Ma- names. Susan. Jemima. <laughs> Natalie. Lauren. Monique. Monique. See, that was my next name. Um, <laughs> and and the, uh, the the need of trying to get, you know, the, 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 you know, Mother's Milk kid out of the way. The names have gone out of my head. But, like, getting the family away is absolutely one of those things that it just felt like it was... Uh, a good moment, a good moment in terms of character development. Forrest is gone. Where's he gone? I, Jesus Christ. I, I got so bored of your know, random names that my computer just gave up. That was, a, that was amazing. That was, you literally that flipped went, out. I just disappeared. Um, um, yes, yeah. uh, Janine is the it daughter, is the daughter and Monique is the is the wife. That's yeah, why yeah, you got confused. Yeah. Right, Forrest, save this podcast. Carry on. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's a lovely touching moment there with <laughs> with the characters that we know no name of. Um, but we basically, on the main part, back, back to the soups, um, just for a minute, is that this is really all about Homelander isolating himself beyond belief. You know, he's he's fucking over Sage at this point. Uh, he's he, you know he's he's getting closer and closer to Firecracker, but equally he's not having any Firecracker shit either. You know, no, even, even even Firecracker's breast milk couldn't save the day in this episode. He was tempted, but he said no, not yeah. today. Because um, we've, we've we've seen characters get to the side of Homelander and be like, "Yeah, look, Homelander's on my side. I'm the one in power." Now we've had it with Ashley, we had it with May for a little bit, we had it with Sage in this series. Now we've got it with Firecracker. Like we we we've been there. You know, oh Stormfront as well. You know, so we've we, we've been there. So it's it. What's nice is that we get the kind of despondency from Homelander immediately. It's like, look, I don't need you here. I don't need you here. I don't need that. You know, even though she kind of leant forward, didn't she, in that shot, and his kind of eye lines, she's like, mm, maybe. No, I I don't want it. I'm not. Yeah, it was a. <laughs> oh god, he's dreaming about the key. Can't be dealing with that. Um... Yeah, so yeah, he's just losing friends there, front and centre. Um, we've got, I mean, A Train and um, yeah, A Train, A Train signing with the boys in this. Um, we've got. Um, I love the bit uh, where A Train when they had their fight uh, in the apartment when the Deep and Black Noir was there. And Deep's like, yeah, bro, you're the league, bro. And he's like, and Joe's like, I always bro. hated your ass. <laughs> and it's like, brilliant. This is this is like peak Marvel dialogue here. 
yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they get, yeah, they, yeah. They, um, the deep kind of just all round, just an irritating character now, isn't he? <laughs> it's yeah, just, he's really the deep is just su- such an irritating character. But I, but I also don't kind of understand where that character is going either. The boys, the boys are I, not a fan. Like Homeland is not a fan. So what's what's going to happen with the D? He's he's currently just a small cog in a very big big wheel, which Homelander is pulling along, right? So what I think, and we've been talking about this for weeks now, we've had reels upon reels about kind of what we think is going to happen with Finale, who we think is going to die. Well, actually, what if the Deep goes? In episode mm. eight, because where where does his character go? Mm. Yeah, it doesn't I, I go th- anywhere. No, I, I think characters that I think are quite easy to get rid of. The deep, uh, I would say, A Train is quite easy to get rid of. Uh, when you I say would... easy, what do you mean? I I like like I because I, I feel like if he dies, mm. that's a good choice because his character's arc has been completed. At this episode. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He finished his story at mm. this episode. He just now needs to die for the sake of other things that might happen. Yeah. But for the I, deep, I think he dies because he hasn't really finished anything. Yes. I, I think easy for me is like characters we're not going to miss. Like yeah. characters, characters whose death isn't going to make you go, oh my God. Right. So the deep and A train, you'll go, yeah. Oh, I could see it. Yeah. I could easily see that coming. Um, even uh, what's his face? The one that can now fly. Different, what, you know. Yeah, Noir. New Noir. Noir to bl- New Noir. Uh, I think again, he could die. He wouldn't give a fuck. Um, I, I want. I, I really want some deaths that you're going to be a bit shocked by, right? Uh, and there are a couple of people that we'll talk about later in this episode because there's a couple of plots with them that we need to talk about first um ashley and a team i don't really uh, a team a train and the a team um uh, ashley and a a train i do you get that do you know it like i don't quite know what they're doing there um i quite i i actually quite like this scene where he was like if you want to go now is the time and it, it brought ashley's role down to a kind of like the, you could well actually it was a really good performance from her actually because you could see the mask break immediately. She's sort of like, Oh, I'm Ashley, I'm I'm the CEO blah, blah, blah. and she was like, No, I need to get out of here. Can we what was what would we do? Blah, blah, blah. I you know, I can't I can't leave, I can't leave. This is and you saw the panic and the genuine vulnerability from her in that part, which I thought was a really good scene. But you're right, it's a it's like a it's a weird match. And also, why would he feel sorry for her? She's been a dick to him. The whole time, so why would he even remotely? But like, there we go. We've got the we've got a new perspective from a trainer of the hero. Like he's he's mm. gone irrespective of the fact that she's been a twat to me for the whole time. I'm gonna see if you can get out of it. Now's the time. I'm gonna give you this as your chance to get out, and I can be your hero. I can be your hero, baby. Oh, baby I can oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you can take. My brother will. <laughs> oh, um, the yeah, um, but going back to you know similar thing with the Ryan storyline where we said it's a weird like A to B. You've got the last episode where he's starting to really dick on people, and then all of a sudden this Avenue Q thing is the thing that makes him go. Do you know what? Enough's enough, right? Yeah. And it's and the same with A Train and Ashley. Ashley having a shit in Homelander's apartment is the thing that's brought these two characters together. I mean, that's literally it, right? And I'm like, that's what? That's the boys. <laughs> that's. I'm like, I'm like, what? That's, but that's, but I, I think, and a lot of people are getting this. Right, looking at Twitter and what other people's comments are. I think the boys have to be careful that they are not just writing poorly under the guise that it's the boys and anything's possible. These two characters needed a lot more bigger reason as to why they're like like on side with each other, other than A Train walked in, she was having a shit in uh, <laughs> Homelander's apartment. Like what? <laughs> yeah, but you got to remember as well. 
we're all we're all we're saying that, but we've very much seen that in the MCU. I mean, look at Quantum Mania. I mean, look at <laughs> look at the the plethora of examples the MCU have done that in terms of like mismatching people. Talking about Quantum Mania, the way that made they made Modok a parody of itself when it was an opportunity to do something interesting with a character that's beloved in animation. That's one tiny thing amongst a bigger thing. But like, yeah, I think maybe they're just. I like I I gotta say I found this intro I found this episode good, but the the thing is is that you can tell that they're just focusing on the main thing. So when it comes to these side plots like that moment with A Train, the story with mm. A Train, Ashley's objectives, all that kind of stuff, it's just like a quick scene. It's nothing that's embedded in. That's nothing that's kind of being a through. You know, a, a, we're not we're not spending too much time focusing on it and. I get that because I think they're because this is we've, st- we've spoken about this before, but like the fact that they're going to an end, they now know the season five is going to be the end. They don't have time to allow Ashley to run away to Florence, and if she chooses to go to Florence, we're going to have some sort of like yeah, Ashley on holiday in Florence kind of situation. We can't do that, right? Mm. So I, I I kind of get it from a writing standpoint. It's kind of like a double edged sword, isn't it? Yes. Perhaps. Um. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about Starlight, though, because Starlight had a bit of an episode here. Um, mm. So, again, still just trying... So, Starlight is trying to figure out how to not be Starlight. The other thing is that we we still haven't got an explanation on why her powers aren't working properly. So, whether that's her deliberately trying to reject the power of being a soup... Or is she, or is there something else going on there? Is like, for instance, the uh, the, uh, the the V that's in her is that mm. going stale? Is that running out? I don't know. Mm. Like, so is there something within it? Is there a way that your body can actually reject the V, which could potentially be the answer to season five to sort of get rid of all the soups, but through a more humane way. Um, she does whack the shit out of the deep, though, in this episode. Mate, she absolutely smashes him, Whoa, though. Oh, there are some punches going into him. She gets those hands up she, in those fins. She grabs... Honestly, his fins are the thing that makes me sick in this whole show. Whenever they show the deep stomach, I just go... Ugh, ugh. It just mate, it makes me sick, mate. The holes and the teeth and the fit. Uh. Uh, uh. It's rank, mate. That is the rankest part for sure. Um, but yeah, she grabs that. She goes to town on that. Um, yeah, and then I think where well, we get Butcher because Butcher's in that fight as well, isn't he? He is in that fight. Yeah, because because he, he gets talk- a big old. He gets a gun. He tries to get the big old gun and he can't get it. Yep. But then he like pows Black Noir underneath that's the it. table and then that's when Black Noir starts flying and everyone's like holy shit and then he starts talking and people are like holy shit in the episode doesn't he call for Kessler to do he said look Kessler I know we did that thing in the in, uh, in, yeah. in the caravan if now's the time to do it so is that implying that Kessler's the person that blacks him out he goes into a, into this kind of situation where he doesn't know what's happening and Kessler mm. takes over as the body and then just absolutely obliterates everybody it's like a human embodiment of venom yeah right? that's what it felt like yeah it's like human embodiment but uh, and also theory time that a lot of people believe that the very end of the episode uh is going to be how we start the final episode so the very end of the episode is butcher passes out in the in the bar yeah uh and joe is sat on a stall behind him a lot of people believe that the next episode is going to be Butcher waking up having killed the entire bar. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh my um, so just leaving that out there, but I think that's you a great You knew there theory. was a reason why Jeffrey D. Morgan said yes to this. Oh, and it's got 100%. to be, yeah. It's just... It's a it's killer brilliant. part. He, he's, he's sick of doing this stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so Butcher... 
Um, Butch tells the group about Samir and Virus. He brings Frenchie back. We get the boys are back in town. Um, they go to... The, now, I slightly missed this because one minute he's coming in talking about the virus uh, and then they're having a discussion about, like, that's when um, Starlight goes, oh, no, my God, you can't you can't set a virus that's going to kill half, like, you know, however much of the population, like, all of the soups. Uh, and then next thing, they're in a random flat. And I kind of mm. missed the reason for that. Did you work out the reason for that? I missed that. I'm trying to remember what your what, what where that is in the episode. You know when they, because that's when they meet the shapeshifter, isn't it? They meet the shapeshifter in the cupboard. It's all the boy. So oh, it's yeah. after the fight, I think. Yeah, it's after the fight. After the little chase scene. Yeah, Frenchie come. Yeah, yeah, and it's part of that chase. But they, why do they go to the flat in the first place? So, uh, I think I they missed just, something. I, uh, yeah, no, because they well in that bit they just meet up, don't they? And then Frenchie comes back, and then Kimiko has that kind of like I'm not talking to you kind of face, and then Frenchie's all like, oh, I'm, oh, I've killed somebody, I'm more sad, and then he kind of gets over that. And again, writing wise, he got over that pretty quickly, didn't he? Yes, he like, did. They just had that scene later with Samir and stuff, and um, yeah, I think I, I think the Samir, you know, sticking the. It is the virus, wasn't it? It was a, a, a vial of the virus mock up yeah. into yeah. Kimiko's leg. But why did they go to the flat though? The scene before. So after Frenchie comes back, they all go to this like like house, which is where they meet Shapeshifter in the cupboard, and then the chase scene starts. But why did they go there in the first place? Didn't they have I- a lead or something? They must have done, but it was so badly. Like it, listeners, tell tell us what I've missed, but. From my point of view, it's so badly told. They're, they're just talking about the virus, and then in the next scene, they just walk into this random flat we've never seen, and then encounter shapeshifter. I'm like, right, okay. But the chase Didn't is cool. Did they have like a tip, like like either Sage or Homelander had been in there, or something? Oh, uh, okay, something yes. like that. Must be right. It must be where the leaks come from. So they've yeah. gone. They've gone to yeah. A train. A train led them to that place. Did he lead them? Well, or he kind did of he get, followed didn't them. He... he was kind of there in the in the shadows, weren't he? Watched. Yeah. Maybe. Honestly, I think I missed wow. a bit there, but wow, it's... guys, we don't know what the fuck wow. we're talking about. Wow, we don't know. We're reviewing episodes, <laughs> and we don't know. Um, but yeah, I at this point in the episode, <laughs> I wrote on my notes. A uh, big shout out to the special effects team. Butcher looks big like horse. <laughs> Butcher looks like horse shit. Butcher looks so. That wasn't rough. visual effects. That was just Carl Urban. <laughs> he <laughs> Carl had an absolute Urban. bender for about a weekend. Carl Urban, Urban had had coronavirus, and they just filmed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he looked, yeah, he looks insane. Like he looks really, like really good. Um, but yeah, they go to the flat. They see super uh, uh, shapeshifter pulling skin off. It's the rankest That's thing rank, ever. Group, uh, the group then try try and save the president. Uh, they make a pact to make uh, to save the president. Now, now, well, let's talk about that because mm. they are we're very much leading into a potential assassination of the president in in the in the finale episode, and not this last week. There's been a, a legit assassination attempt mm. on uh, Donald Trump. Now, our you know our imitating life, right? Like. Mm. <laughs> The, are we saying the boys is like the new Simpsons? It might well be, mate. Do you know it what I mean? It might well be. <clears throat> they like predicting the future while we're watching something. Mm. Mad. Anyway, but yeah, that I think that's what we're leading into. Is uh, we've got well, we've got to, haven't we? We've got to circle back into the politics Newman. around the boys with Newman, with the soups, and all that kind of stuff. Because we started the season with that. We've got to end it in that way, way as well. So, yeah, I, th- I think there'll be uh, a certain president being... The president there. Um, it, that bit follows up Web Weaver in the mightiest way that Homelander oh. has killed anyone in his life. Rough. And the thing is, though, he, he, 
what was great in that scene is that he even knew that he wasn't the league. So even so, he just went, oh, okay, fine, I'm just going to pop you, I'm just going to murder you. Split you in two. Literally split you in two. Um, yeah, and, and again, what was great, we got the reaction from Firecracker there, realising who the fuck you are siding with as well. This is a heinous man, and you are siding with somebody who is genuinely, could, in a blink of an eye, just pop your head off. That's it. You're gone. You know, so th- it was really good to see that kind of reaction of fear from her. Um, Abs- absolutely. The um, We are, it's followed quite closely, uh, that whole bit, by Kimiko revealing why she lost her voice in possibly the weirdest explanation I've ever heard of in my life. So she's talking about her childhood and she murders, like, another young girl. Like, they're both, like, got knives and she has to murder this other young girl. Uh, And basically she murdered the girl without making a sound and then she couldn't make a sound after that. Yeah, yeah. And (laughs) I'm like... Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. really understand. I don't know if does that mean that we're like? Are we alluding to the fact that she can make noise and that potentially that's going to save Frenchie's life in the end or something? I don't want them to. I. I. I think they really made a home run with having the use of sign language in the show. The Walking mm. Dead did it so well um, mm. towards the end of their show. Um, well, it was kind of third. It was like towards the last, wasn't it? The last bit, wasn't it? But like the way that they yeah. tell, you can tell stories through sign language, and that level of accessibility is really and, and and just representation is really important. But like, if they kind of just go, oh yeah, no, she can actually talk, and she's like yeah. selectively mute. It just, I don't know. It does it does it cheapen it? Is what I kind of like throw out there. Does it cheapen her as a as a character? Hmm. I, I, I think, yeah, I but agree. I think you're right. I think we might hear her talk. I, I just, I just felt like the story was a bit of a weird. It, it was a bit weird. Like, so she's not had her voice removed or any, nothing's happened to her actual yeah, voice. Yeah. It's, it's merely a circumstances like made her a selective mute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we have that. Um, we then, yeah, we have Huey trying to convince Newman in, in probably one of the most boring scenes of the episodes. I gotta yeah. be honest, it was it was just like, all oh, right, okay, it's it, it's lots of short scenes in this episode, and some of the scenes you were just like, yeah, I would have liked a lot more of one scene, yeah. and and possibly none of that one. There was no reason for it. And they they ended they started and ended the the scene in the same way. There is a part of you that believes that maybe Newman like will come over to that side, but which uh, you know is probably inevitable. Where at some point this has got to be everyone versus Homelander, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, the there is we now move on to to the fight, right? With D Black Noir, Billy Stargirl, Starlight. You keep um, saying star girl, you <laughs> silly boy. <laughs> Eric, there he goes again. Oh, oh why don't you keep saying starlight? Oh, star girl. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> uh, there was a line that I really liked that the deep says, and he says to Billy, I can barely understand you. Your accent's insane. <laughs> did you, yeah, did you catch so that? And I, yeah. I was like, oh, that's a genius little nod there to Carl Urban shit. Uh, so whatever good. accent is. Um, yeah, so we get that. Um, Mother's Milk kills Noir. Oh, well, doesn't probably doesn't kill because no one dies in this with a machine yeah, no, gun. No, it's to, yeah, oh. pumps straight out the window. Um, yeah, we got Noir flying as well, but like, I think it, we, we need to see Noir go, I think. Mm-hmm. Or, or at least do a little white vision situation where they just, like, disappear and we don't see them come back until, like, you know, Gen V season two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe maybe putting Black Noir in Gen V kind of strengthens it as well. I don't know how old new Black Noir is as well, so it would be quite cool if he was a Godolkin alumni. 
Yeah, I think, see what I, mean. I think that's it. That would be a genius stroke because what I was just thinking of is if that was the case, you could then have an arc in the next series of Gen V, which is um, they decide all of the um, superheroes that are currently locked in that little chamber at the moment. Yep. Maybe what they do is they have like copycat seven is like the whole Gen V series two. So like Vought realizes that it's just, it's a, such a complete shit show that they just like every, everyone's removed from the seven, but the public doesn't know that. So they yeah. just copy, they just bring these like copycat uh, seven in, but they've all got different powers. So That's it's quite it. fun. Like, yeah, you end up with a deep, but the, but the deep is actually the, the person that shrinks. <laughs> <laughs> can't can't talk to fish at all which is tiny <laughs> um yeah yes nice. so lots of different stuff going on there um so we find out the sage knew about a train all along being the leak uh sage had a plan to provide uh, a train disinformation um but homelander doesn't want to doesn't want to listen to it at all matt he just thinks yeah, no done. no no He's, he's self-destructed. He's doing it his way. That's what he's doing. I mean, he's pretty. He's pretty much been doing it his way anyway. But I think he kind of. I get. I don't. I don't know. He kind of. He's clocked now, hasn't he? He's going. Look, I'm being led by other people's plans here. I just want. I just want to do what I want to do. I. I just. I don't know. I don't. Well, I, I don't want to talk about it just yet because it's kind of like I think it's towards it at the end. But in terms of like finale for the season four we've got to see some sort of like mass mass killings for yeah do you know what i mean from because it'll be quite wouldn't it be quite cool because it's you saying that butcher starts the episode with killing a whole bar what if it ends with then homelander killing everybody in vault towers so you've yeah, got yeah. these juxtapositions between these two characters that have effectively done the same thing mm. do you know what i mean and so, you know Tease that little, tease that little nugget. Um, yeah, and then uh, I got very excited in the scene afterwards. So the scene after that is Kimiko and Frenchie uh, befriending all over again. Samir is there. They uh, they come up with a plan that if Samir gives them what they want, they're just going to let him go, let go and yeah. that's going to be the end of it. Uh, and then Samir injects Kimiko, at which point, Matt, mm. I was... I thought Lame. I had I had correctly theorised yet again. I was like, I told you they're going to kill off Kimiko because of the whole Frenchie and Kimiko thing, and then no, because it's the oh, boys. It was a good tease though. There was a big. It was a good tease, and we again we go Walking Dead. They start amp- like making people ampu- amputating people uh, to stop uh, the a virus. Uh, from infecting the whole body so she loses a leg and then we get a little bit of a deadpool reference there with a uh, small she gets a small leg yeah mm. <laughs> she's Very just swinging f- it at the end of the episode just, just swinging, swinging the baby it leg. about <laughs> swinging so, the baby leg so rank <laughs> <laughs> um the um the other thing is is i think it does tease you know a, a kimiko death uh, in mm. in that's in you know in episode 7 but i don't think we'll, i don't think we will but maybe maybe it is maybe maybe it is because maybe it is something like that that needs to happen to justify the season five's you know the boys coming together blah, blah, blah. Frenchy needs a little bit more in his in his arc as well. What mm. I think could happen is that Kimiko gets into a kind of a bad state and Frenchy sacrifices himself yes for Kimiko. Because then it gives him a bit of a redemption arc. The fact that he was, you know, he's killed all these people, or, or he saves his ex boyfriend. I don't know. Or mm-hmm. sacrifices himself for his ex boyfriend. Something like that. And then it gives that kind of emotional weight of a loss. Whenever I hear sacrifices, I just think yeah. of the Harry the Harry Potter reference. Sacrifice, sacrifice himself. himself. He's going to sacrifice himself. Frenchy, no. what are you going to do? He's going to <laughs> sacrifice himself. No, Kimiko. No. He's going to sacrifice himself. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> he's going. <laughs> He's going to sacrifice himself. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, I've got an idea. Oh, God. Can you get the lines up? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, okay. Sacrifice himself. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So I want I want um, Harry Potter to be uh, <laughs> butcher. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Who are you gonna be? Who's the other one? Who's wrong? M- Moses Mill. Yeah. Oh, where's the, where is the proper script? Yeah. Uh, if you go on IMDb, I'm on it now. So if you go, if you sort of sacrifice himself, Harry Potter lines, and it's the first link on IMDb. Okay. Go. We're doing it. We're doing this, dear listener. We're doing this. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um. Okay. You ready? <laughs> so Wait, where we, is it? I, I'm Harry as Carl Urban. Yeah. Wait, where is it? Are you on uh, oh, Herm- Hermione? Gra- oh, all right, hang on. Let me just send you the link. This is fun to listen Jesus. to for everybody. Huh? This is quality. Jesus Christ! Uh, if you go oh, on the private- moment's gone. Go okay, on private- okay, I got it. I got it. Go on <laughs> private chat. Okay, go. I got it. I got it. I got it. You found it. You found it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Wait a minute. You see it? Don't- well, who's Ron? Who's Ron? I don't know. You. <laughs> You said that I'm... <laughs> oh, wait, I'll do... Uh, uh, no, I'll do Ron as the Deep. Okay. You see okay. it, don't you, Harry? Uh, once I make my move, the Queen will take me. Then you're free to check the King, bro. No, Deep, no. What is it? <laughs> He's going to sacrifice himself. No, you can't. There must be another way. Do you want to stop Snape from getting that stone or not? Oh, no. <laughs> Wrong part. <laughs> wrong, wrong part. This is going so fucking well. This is lovely, isn't it? Don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's going We're to going. sacrifice himself. Oh god, can you, you wanna, just see? Do you want to stop Snape from getting that stone or not? Can you do Ron's famous line as butcher? Uh, Say it and, and change Harry to Huey. <laughs> You see, uh, what you see it, don't you? And, so, and change and no. change Hermione to Annie. Oh, Jesus Christ! This is great. <laughs> <laughs> right, where are we starting from? No, no, you just do the line. Just do the line. Just do, just do Ron's line as as butcher. Okay, that Harry, it's you that has to go on. I know it, not me, not Hermione, you. But I want you to change Harry to Huey yeah. oh. and Hermione to Annie. Alright, Huey. Listen, you're welcome. Huey, it's you that has to go on. I know it. Not me. Not Annie. You. (laughs) Better. (laughs) Better. Uh, Huey, it's you that has to go on. I know it. Not me. Not Annie. You. Better. Better. He's going to sell for his better. This has been absolute chaos. You know what, Dillister, if if you're um, uh, genuinely watching the boys and coming back to this podcast to get some informative deep dives into the episodes. <laughs> I can only apologize. This is, this is surely, surely not what we're, uh, we're delivering, uh, but it's, it was never the intention. If you actually, I'll have you not know actually, listen to listener. If you've been listening to since the beginning, we did say, this is what this podcast is, man. Mm. We don't deep dive. We're not deep divers. We like to like dip our toes in, you know, <laughs> 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 Uh, cool. Ah. So Ryan and Homer. <laughs> so next bit is we get Ryan makes a statement on the TV, um, and it, we're kind of getting an idea that it's going to be Ryan and Homelander against each other from now on. Uh, Ryan makes a statement about his mum uh, on the TV. Um, at this point, I kind of said have a lot of the storylines been rushed due to the announcement of the final season. Maybe that's why this series feels so fragmented. Yeah, is that we just had to. We've had to kind of rush to to, yeah. to the end thing and go, uh, and then we get <laughs> much Butcher. like this episode, yeah, yeah, basically, sacrifice <laughs> uh, himself. Butcher dies. He sacrifices himself. Uh, he yeah, he, he face plants in the bar uh, after having enough uh, with Joe, but it looks like Joe Kez is getting his own back because he gives it a little yeah, smile, he does. doesn't he? Oh, like a Negan smile. Oh, mm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's 
it's enticing um yeah i'm looking forward to see what happens actually with the picture but also i don't know whether it happened before or after that bit um but starlight oh this happens puts after on, mate puts on the old outfit but oh. bless huey huey cannot catch a break oh oh so poor, doppelganger poor whoever huey. this new not doppelganger shapeshifter i don't even know what their name is you don't even know who they are um Father dies. starlight yeah Father, Father dies, dies, tortured. Yeah, by and masochist then... in Ashley, and then and then this. Oh yeah, and yeah, she comes in and he comes in, uh, and then yeah, they go to they go to sexy town. Um, I but, do, but it but again, someone also picks apart that she back. I think in series series one, uh, she says that whenever she orgasms, her eyes glow. And someone, someone knew that this was coming because during that sex scene, they don't glow. So, does Huey notice that? No. Well, I, I would have thought evidently not, right? Otherwise, he'd oh. be a bit like, he'd be like, Annie, what's going on? Even here? even if he noticed, he went, oh, I'll stop glowing. This ain't her, you know, I'll carry on. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm not going to stop the flow now. Oh, My man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so and then yeah, and then she gets up. Uh, she walks to the safe, um, and then takes out takes out the safe stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that's what happens. She does take out the safe stuff, and she then ta- she walk, walks away. But we see we see Annie then in a uh, chained up somewhere, and we kind of get a little flashback that was t- she, that a photo was taken of her when she was in the bar scene that was the shape sister that's how she kind of takes the 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 the, the, per, the skin i don't know i don't know how that happens or how that works i'll be interested to see how because we saw we saw how it grows don't we when she kind of first got away it's quite a quick process but um the way it comes off is absolutely disgusting um yeah oh, man what I, I i kind of wish i kind of wish it would it would have been a reveal like that of understanding that actually this isn't Starlight, but it wouldn't have happened so recently. Like, yeah, imagine I was imagine for if like that episodes. was episodes. Yeah, whole episodes that have gone, and it was actually Shapeshifter and not Annie at all. It was just somebody completely different. That would have been better. And then on the reveal, we could have got all the flashbacks where we're like, oh yeah, shit, this person did that, but Annie yeah. hasn't done any of that. But jumping on another theory that you were saying that we, I think we were talking about either last week or the week before about Firecracker potentially not being who Firecracker is, mm. but another doppelganger, right? So what if in that little room that Annie's it stuck in, what in, in the other side of the room is Firecracker? Yeah, 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 yeah. Could you imagine? And, and as well, because it doesn't have to be just one shape shifter. There could be a pair of them, right? There could be more of them. And we're using more of them as they go through. What if there is a whole room of the the people that we have seen throughout the episodes that actually aren't who they say they are? That would have been a cool review. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe it will still happen. Who knows? Maybe we, Huey could be. Maybe all of these are being puppeteered by Homelander. Maybe. And we, you know, and maybe there's a little homage because in the, when she one thing that did cross my brain was uh when she wakes up you know she's in that like she's in, i think she's in the same flat as they were in right at the beginning of the episode but yep. she's also obviously like chained up kind of reminded me a bit of saw it does give that yeah saw i think saw 2 is the one where they're in the house and it yeah. looks very much like that set and then they're chained up yeah so who knows? Could be Homelander getting his little revenge over certain people. Who knows? Interesting. Um, Interesting. Question I had though: How does she know the safe code? Oh, it's a good point. That was a good point. Mm. Just throwing that well, does out. She, there. Does she take the memories? Does she take the not just the the, the face and the skin, but everything else? Yeah, potentially, potentially. Um, she knew about the uh, Starlight's outfit as well, so yeah, she knew she knew that, that, that he was going to chuck it. So, well, she certainly wasn't surprised when he was uh, he was surprised that she'd got it. So, there you go. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. uh, there we go. I mean, uh, so I mean, episode well, we, eight. We, episode eight. Yeah, the finale is coming. The last episode we'll be doing for the boys for a long time will be next week. Um, 
the other thing is is that we're gonna we're going on a little holiday i say we we're going separately different places but mm. we're having a little bit of a break so that i think that what there will probably be a week potentially uh without an episode we haven't figured it out yet but just letting you know now dear listener Letting you know. Letting you know. Now. Well, actually, no. We might. We might be alright. You never know. We might be alright because we might, might be alright. We it might record might, it just in time. It, it might be the one in two weeks' time that's affected. So Correct. you might find that the week of the 29th, there might not be a pod. But who knows? Hopefully not. Hopefully um, nice. But we will have the final episode up, ready for next Wednesday. Don't we'll you worry well, about well, that. We'll We're going to well. record that. We'd also, we also, I mean, Deadpool Wolverine's going to be coming out very soon. We're going to need to be reviewing that. We're going to, we've, got, we've got to make that a big, big celebration. We're going to have to see if we can get our mate Lee from Lights Camera Rant on because he oh, has been with us the whole journey of reviewing the whole Deadpool. Deadpool journey. Um, so we'll have to see if he's about. Um, but yeah, I mean, dear listener, we've got a Friday episode of Extra Man interview. Please do check it out. It's such a great podcast and it was such a great chat with them. Um, Also, if you're interested in that kind of thing in terms of comic books, the creation of comic books, how projects like that start, um, what kind of ingredients you need, what kind of partnerships you need. But we kind of went into it in that kind of regard. And it was really interesting to learn more about that and particularly their kind of journey. Um, And they're absolutely smashing it. So do check it out. It'll be uploaded on Friday Um, next week. Yeah. Episode eight be interested to know how it goes down and then we'll give us our final reviews as well and ratings our crisp rating for season four of the boys i think deep is dying i think a train is dying uh and i think either frenchy or kimiko do not survive this series i think we get rid of three well i think and i'm with the person that's just commented on our youtube shorts on one of our reels about who's going to be turning up or dying this is from Bully Maguire, 66713. He says, I just hope they just let out Soldier Boy by the end of the season. As for the big deaths, the only one I see happening is A-Train. Now, I am all with Bully there. I want mm. Soldier Boy back. I want Soldier Boy turning up, spit slapping everybody, going, what the hell's going on here? Daddy's I back. Papa's home. Think, I think I know what's happened to Soldier Boy. I think... So apparently the boys cast are going to San Diego Comic-Con. I think two things are happening. One which is based on certain things I've read and one which is my own theory. Yeah, one is that Series 5, after Series 5, we're going to get a feature film which completely finishes the franchise. Yep. I think that would be a bad mistake because what that means is that we're going to have no deaths in Series 5 Agreed. because they're all going to be left for the film. So that would be a horrendous idea, but I can see them doing it to capitalise on money. Number two, I think Soldier Boy is getting his own series. It's going to be a spin-off. Oh, my God, no. See, then they're just, they're just becoming... The people they are parodying with MCU. Do you know what I mean? I can see it happening, boy, because we've got Maeve in the background somewhere as well. So unless they're coming back for it, I don't think they'll be in this series. I think they'll either come back for the final series or they're saving are saving at least Soldier Boy for, a, for his own spin-off. Well, dear listener, let's wait and see. Thank you for listening to another episode. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much for sticking with us. That was a chaotic hour, wasn't it? Blooming hell. Mm. We're there though. We got it. We made it, as we do every week. We, it's like yeah, a, we it's did. like a, it's like a slog, but we get through it, eh? Um, look, next week, Friday. Check us out. Here we go, bro. Ne- next week, Friday. I think he meant. I think he meant this Friday. And next, next week's Wednesday, episodes, next the episode eight, when, but this Friday we've got, yeah, yeah. This Friday. We, we've, we've already done that. Yeah. That, that's uh, it. Cool. Uh, All right. Yeah. Bye now. Yeah, bye. <laughs>